Welcome to this episode of Shabbat with a Shmir. Actually, we're still virtual, but this is a very important episode because this is the last episode of the year in which we study together the last portion of the year, Vizot Bracha. And Meredith, I'm here with Shabbat Ma Meredith Berkman. Meredith, this is in many ways the most tragic portion of the entire Torah. Moshe worked so hard. Moshe took so much from the people. And at the end, he's not able to enter the land. But we're told that even though he wasn't able to enter the land, there never was a prophet like Mm -hmm. Moses again, who God chose. What do you make of that? Well, you know, we're always reading, um, this will be a hard year for so many of us if we're not in our sanctuaries and we're not with people that we love. We've said this before. Um, I, this particular moment I associate with sitting on the floor of my congregation where we're, so we've just had, um, you know, that they usually have um, an older person from the community to read this final aliyah and then a young person comes and reads the beginning of a sheet immediately after. And I always, um, you know, we're all seated on the floor together. I'm thinking about that and, and missing that moment. Moment. But, you know, the, as you said, it's, he goes up on the mountain and the Lord says to him, this is the land of which I swore to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, I will assign it to your offspring. I have let you see it with your own eyes, but you shall not cross there, right? That's the piece, you know, we learned that a long time ago when he hit the rock and we knew that was coming. But I think the more um, poignant piece, I mean, remember, he's 120 years old. I, I always forget. How do you say it in Yiddish? As my father always says. This one's written spontic until 120. Right. right. So I'm always saying to my 92-year-old father, Daddy, it's like you're only in late middle age because God willing, you're going to 120. That's what we're going for. But it's this notion that never again did there arise in Israel a prophet like Moses, whom the Lord singled out face to face for the various signs and portents the Lord sent to him and for dot, 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 and for all the great might and awesome power that Moses displayed before all Israel. Never again did there arise in Israel a prophet like Moses. So on so many levels, I think it's even more poignant this year, you know, like there's been a lot of loss, a loss of elderly and vulnerable. There's been for the moment, hopefully just temporary, a loss of physical community. But this notion of of the loss, that it's the end of an era. You know, we close the fifth book in the five books of Moses. There are so many more books to read and prophets and books of King, all of that. But um, it's the end of the story of Moses. It's the end of, of, of the, it's the end of God's being so, quote, physically present among the people. And that I think is you feel um, Moses' longing to remain with the people to make sure they don't screw up. You hear about the wailing of the people, you know, mourning for Moses. But I find what's the most powerful, what really pulls at my heart is this notion that never again did we have a prophet like Moses who was so close to God. And um, and so there's this certain longing for that connection to Moses and through Moses to God, you know, that at the end of this era of the five books of Moses, we were meant to enter the land and um, create an entirely new way of being human in the world and following the, the laws of God. And so I think in this moment, it feels like, again, we've talked about the sort of sacred digital content, the creation of sacred space within our homes and our communities without what we're used to, which is the synagogue. Um, I think it all, it it just resonates even more deeply, I think, this year. Um, That's really a beautiful idea. And I think that, you know, the idea of being the end of an era, and I think it's so powerful that on Simchat Torah, the end of an era, and you know, then what we do immediately is we start it all over again. And I think that we we should end our discussion of the Torah this week by remembering that two years ago, you approached me and BJ on Simchas Torah night. And, you know, we're going to miss it this year. And I think there's something that's really almost tragic about the fact that there won't be Simchas Torah. There won't be dancing together. There won't be a community coming together. But we can appreciate the fact that Shabbat with a Shmir came from the fact that you came to me. And I don't know if everybody in Shabbat with a Shmir knows that... um, um, we share, in a way, we share a last name because everybody else in your house has the last <laughs> name Mintz. So, that's um, true. That's true. That's true. How many Mints? How many Mints seem are there on the West Side? That's, that's right. True. That is true. But I think. But I do think that um, that 
right it was we did meet on Simcha's Torah um but you have given me such a it's been such a wonderful experience over these last two years to help create a sacred space both at Barney Greengrass and here digitally where we can hopefully um make the I mean that's what you do so well and as you make the Torah come alive and there's you know next the next time we begin reading again um I always find it's the magic book that's what I've always told my kids there's always every year when I read the same words over and over there is something I cannot believe I've never read before or that I've never noticed before and in that way it is eternal all of it and I'm really grateful to share this kind of eternal um learning and appreciation of Torah with you so thank you and I appreciate studying with you and uh, more I can say then I'm looking forward to Breshit and starting all over again onward me too Shabbat Shalom Chag Sameach be well Shabbat Shalom Chag Sameach